Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's tutorial, we're making a bell sleeve crop sweater. I am a sucker for crop hoodies and nothing is better than having a belt sleeve. So here we are. Speaking of, do you know where you are? You are at the go-to place for crochet makes. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns with even more dropping twice weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 600 grams of yarn. That's 1,150 yards if you're stateside. As her tools, a five and five and a half millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. And there is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us you have any other hobbies other than crochet. I haven't had as much time to do it, but I really love to draw. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using four stitches for this project and will be as follows. Chain. slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making a chain that is in multiples of 12 that reaches from mid collarbone across our chest to mid collarbone. We are back. Now I have a total of 24 chains that's roughly 6 inches or 15 centimeters and we want to make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into every 12th chain that we made. Then from here, we're going to make another chain that is in multiples of 12 that reaches from mid collarbone within the front of our body, so where we left off, up and over our shoulder to the back. Now this portion of our chain does need to be in multiples of 12 again. We are back and our shoulder chain is complete. Now for this portion of my chain, I actually made another chain of 24. Again, that's 6 inches or 15 centimeters, and I did make sure to insert my stitch marker into every 12th chain again. Now from here, this is just going to be the prep chain, so this is mainly just to see how many rows we need to do for our actual collar portion. This isn't going to be used for the actual piece. But once we have the front panel and the shoulder portion completed, we're going to want to make sure that we write down the numbers, and the front panel will have the same amount of numbers as the back panel, and then the shoulder will have the same amount of numbers as the other shoulder. So for those of you that have my numbers, I'm going to have 24 front panel chains, and coincidentally 24 shoulder chains, then again 24 back panel chains, and then 24 other shoulder chains. Now once we have this entire chain completed, go ahead and just wrap this around our head to make sure that it fits nicely. Now if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip, or if it's too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip. But once we have the entirety of our collar figured out, we can now get started on the actual height of our collar. So now that we have the prep chain all figured out, we have all of those numbers remembered, we can get started on the height of our collar. So we're going to grab our same category 4 yarn, make a slip knot, grab our same 5mm hook, and we're all going to start by making a chain the height that we'd like for our collar to be. Now I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or 2 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 4. And now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain 1. That chain 1 doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And then starting with that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So we're going to insert our hook, then yarn over, and pull through both of those loops on our hook, remembering to pull through gently, otherwise the following row can be too tight to work into. Let's do this again. Into that following chain, I'm going to insert, yarn over, and pull through both. Again, into that next chain, yarn over, and gently pull through both. Now we're going to continue this until we reach the end of the row, and I just so happen to reach the end of my row right here. So now what we're going to do is get started on our row 2. So chain 1, and flip. From here, it's just going to continue to be back loop slip stitch rows. 
So finding that first stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert into that back loop. Then yarn over and gently pull through both loops, and again, into that next stitch's back loop. Yarn over and gently pull through both loops. And we're going to continue this to reach the end of the row. And then once we do, repeat this row. So chain one, flip our work, and then continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now we're going to continue on with our back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as chains that we made for the front panel. Now, I made a total of 24 chains for my front panel prep chain, so I'll meet you back when I have 24 rows, but do remember that we are inserting a stitch marker into every 12th row. Alrighty, so we are back. I have actually done a little bit more than just my first 24 rows, but what we are going to do from here is going to be pretty simple. So once when I have my first 24 rows, making sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into every 12th row, once we have the same amount of rows as chains that we made for the front panel, we are going to want to make sure we either insert a second stitch marker or another stitch marker, kind of like how I did here, just to make sure that we know that this is for the front panel. Then the same rule applies for the shoulder portion. So since my shoulder portion, I made a total of 24 chains, I made another 24 rows, making sure that I still inserted my stitch marker into every 12th row. I also inserted a second stitch marker into the total amount of chains that I made for my shoulder, so into that 24th row as well. We just want to make sure that we have this extra stitch marker into the points where we know that's going to connect right underneath our underarm to form our armholes and our body portion. Now we're going to continue on with this row sequence until we have the same amount of rows as the total amount of chains that we made. Now for those of you that have my numbers, I made a total of 96 chains, so I made a total of 96 rows. For me, that's roughly 16 inches or 41 centimeters unstretched, making sure that we're still inserting our stitch markers into every 12th row and our secondary stitch marker to separate our armholes and our front and back panel. Now once we have the entirety of our collar completed, we can seam it together. So once we have that, let's fold our work in half into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. So once we have inserted our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, we're now going to yarn over and pull through everything. Now we're going to do our outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that first available stitch and inserting only in through that front loop. Then find that next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. Then from here we're going to yarn over and gently pull through everything on our hook. That's the first one, let's do the next. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through everything and continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Now once when we have seamed our collar, we're now going to do a single crochet row along the bottom of our collar. So we're all gonna switch our hook out to now our five and a half millimeter hook. Now once we've switched out our hook, we're going to chain one, and all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every side row that we have, so ultimately we will end with the same amount of rows that we made, and we do need to make sure that we're inserting our stitch markers into the same stitches. So everything will be divided by 12, and we still know where our body and our underarms are going to meet. So just to do the first one, I'm going to find my first side row, which is this one right here. I'm going to find that top loop, and insert with just one single crochet. And since this is the side row that I've inserted my stitch markers into, I'm going to make sure that I'm inserting my stitch markers into there as well. And now that both of my stitch markers are into place, I'm going to continue with one single crochet into every side row. So doing the next one, we're going to find our next side row, which is this divot for me, find that top loop, insert with a single. My next side row is this raised row, so I'm going to find that top loop and insert with one single again. And just continue on with our single crochet row, making sure that we're inserting our stitch markers into the stitches that it needs to be into, basically. And once we've made our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space. Now as a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this neckline can stretch. So when the single crochet row is completed, try on your collar, making sure that it can still fit around our head. If it's a little bit too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. So we are back. Our single crochet row along our collar is complete. Now we're going to get started on the prep row for the chevron portion. So what we're going to do right after we have slip stitched into that chain space is chain three and flip our work. We're all going to want to make sure that we're working in the opposite direction 
from our nearest stitch marker stitch. So since this is my nearest stitch marker, I'm going to flip my work and work in the other direction. So once when our work is flipped, we're going to get started on the prep row. Now this prep row is going to be the same for every size. So getting this started, we're all going to start with a yarn over and making sure that we're working in the opposite direction from our nearest stitch marker. We're going to insert our hook into that same stitch that our chain three is in with one double crochet. So insert, pull through. When we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now that chain three does count as a stitch and so does this double crochet. This is just going to be one half of this increase right where our row meets. Now right after we have that one double crochet, we're going to be putting another double crochet into that following stitch. So yarn over, insert with a double, then into the next three stitches, one half double into each. So yarn over. Into that next stitch, there's one half double, so pull through, pull through all three, and let's do two more. Into that next with our second half double, and then into that next with our third half double. Then we're gonna do three single crochets. So into that next, insert with one single, into the following with our second single, into that following with our third single crochet. Now we're basically going to mirror everything we did here on the other side. So starting with three half double crochets. So yarn over, into that following stitch with one half double, stitch right after that with a second half double, stitch right after that with a third half double crochet. After that, we should have one stitch left before a stitch marker. We're all going to do one double crochet. And now that we're at our stitch marker, we're going to do an increase of three double crochets, making sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into that middle stitch. So yarn over, into that following stitch with one double, into that same stitch with a second double, into that same stitch with a third double crochet, and don't forget to insert your stitch marker into that second stitch that we made so we know where the point of our chevron is going to be. Now we're basically going to mirror everything we did here, working our way all the way around, so let's just do the next set together really quickly. So right after that increase, we're going to do one double, then three half doubles, then three single crochets, then three half doubles, then into the stitch that's right before our stitch marker, one double crochet, and then into our stitch marker stitch, an increase of three double crochets, making sure we're inserting our stitch marker into that middle stitch. And that is pretty much it. We're just gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and I will meet you guys back when we have made our way all the way around and we don't have any more stitches left to work into. All right, so we're back. We have made our way all the way around with our first chevron prep row. We all shouldn't have any more stitches left to work into, so all we're going to do from here is put one more double crochet into that same stitch that our chain three is in to complete this first increase that we have right here. So we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch with one double crochet. Then from here to close off the row, we are going to slip stitch into that third chain that we made when we started this row. So count of one, two, three, into that third chain. Now our row one is complete. So now let's all get started on our row two. So chain three and flip. So now that our prep chain is complete, we're gonna get started on our first row. So after we chain three and flipped our work, we're going to start the same way that we started our previous row. So now we're going to be putting one back loop double crochet into the same stitch that our chain three is coming out of. So yarn over into that first stitch's back loop with one double crochet. Again, this counts as one half of our increase for this point. Then from here, since we should all have the same numbers, we're all gonna put one back loop double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So to do this together, yarn over, into that next stitch, insert with one, back loop double, there's one, into the next, there is two, into the next, there is three, into the next, there is four, and then into the next, there is five. Now once we all have our five back loop double crochets, we're now going to do a double crochet three together. So how we're gonna do that is yarn over. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that next stitch, making sure it's within the back loop, yarn over and pull through for three loops on our hook. 
Then we're going to yarn over it and pull through two for two loops on our hook. We're going to do this two more times. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following stitches back loop, yarn over, pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the first two to get a total of three, and once more, yarn over into that next stitches back loop, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the first two loops to get a total of four loops on our hook, then we're all going to yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. Now that is our double crochet three together. Now from here, we're basically going to mirror everything we did here, working our way up to our next stitch marker stitch. So doing this together, yarn over. One back loop double crochet, it's worked into each of the next five stitches. So into that next, here is one. Into the next, here is two. Into the next, here is three. Into the next, here's four. One more, here's five, and we should all be at our stitch marker stitch. Now once we reach our stitch marker stitch, we're all going to do an increase of three double crochets. So take that out for now, into that stitch with one back loop double, same stitch with a second back loop double, and same stitch with a third back loop double, and don't forget to insert your stitch marker into that middle stitch that we made. And from here, it's going to be a repeat of this, making our way all the way around. So let's just do the next section together once more. Now, just like how we did the previous one, we're going to be putting one back loop double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Now here are five back loop double crochets. Now we're going to double crochet three together. So yarn over, the next stitch is back loop, pull through, pull through two. Yarn over, next stitch is back loop, pull through, pull through two. And once more, yarn over, next stitch is back loop, pull through, pull through two. Then when we have four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four. Then from here, one back loop double crochet into each of the next five stitches, or until we reach our following stitch marker stitch. And now that we're at our following stitch marker stitch, an increase of three. So just into that following stitch, one back loop double, same stitch with another back loop double, and then same stitch with a third back loop double. And don't forget to insert your stitch markers into that middle stitch. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat this section, making our way all the way around. Then I'll meet you back to close off the row and get started on the following row. We are back and our first true chevron row is nearly complete. We've made our way all the way down. We don't have any more stitches left to work into. Now we're just going to complete this first increase that we have and our row is going to be finished. So all we're going to do is yarn over into that same stitch that our chain three is in, insert with a double crochet. Now to close off the row, we're going to slip stitch into that third chain to complete this row. And now our row one is complete. Now what we're going to do from here is our increase row. So every even number row is going to be an increase row. So we're all going to start with a chain three and flip. We do want to make sure that we're flipping our work after every row to keep up with the ribbing that we have for the chevron detail. So how the increase rows are going to work is we're basically just going to be adding an extra stitch right at the points of our piece. So to do this one, we're going to start off this row with two back loop double crochets into that same stitch that our chain three is in. So yarn over into that same stitch with one double crochet and then into that same stitch with another double crochet. Then from here, our section should be the same for every size. So we're all going to be putting one back loop double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Once we have our five back loop doubles, we're going to do our double crochet three together. Then close off this portion with five back loop double crochets again, and then I'll meet you back at our stitch marker. And now that we're at our stitch marker, we're now going to be doing an increase of five double crochets. So take out your stitch marker into that stitch marker stitch, insert with one back loop double, a second back loop double, a third back loop double, fourth back loop double, and fifth back loop double, and don't forget, we do need to insert our stitch marker into that middle stitch, so it will be our third double crochet that we made for this increase. So here's one, two, three, insert your stitch marker into that third. And now from here, it's going to be a complete repeat of this section. So since we already know how to do this, we're going to continue on with our five back loop doubles, our double crochet through together, 
another five back loop doubles, then increase of five back loop doubles, making my way all the way around. So I've made my way all the way around with my row two. I don't have any more stitches left to work into. We're going to complete this first increase, and then it's going to be a repeat. So since this is our row two, which is an increase row, we're going to need to insert two double crochets into that same stitch that our chain three's in. So just into that same stitch with two double crochets. So here's my first, here's my second, and now we're going to close off the row by slip stitching into that third chain that we made. Now, like I said, from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So let's just get started on the following row and do the first section together, and I'll let you finish up that row on your own. So chain three and flip. Now getting started on our row three, which is an odd number row, we need to remember that every odd number row isn't gonna have any increases. So what we're going to do is yarn over into that same stitch that our chain three is in with one double crochet. Then from here, we're all gonna be putting one back loop double crochet into the next six stitches. Now it's six for this row because our previous row had that extra increase right at the point. And now that we have our six back loop double crochets, we're gonna do our double crochet three together. Our double crochet three together is completed. Now one back loop double crochet into each of the next six stitches or until we reach our stitch marker. Then at our point, an increase of three back loop double crochets. Now our first section is complete. Continue to repeat this section, making our way all the way around and making sure that we close off the row with an extra double crochet into the same stitch that our chain three is in to complete this first increase. Then I'll meet you back to get started on the following row. We are back. Our first one, two, three rows are complete. Let's do our row four's first section and the rest is gonna be a repeat. So chain three and flip. Now this is our row four. So an even number row, we are doing an increase into every even number row. So how we do that is start by inserting two back loop double crochets into the same stitch that our chain three is coming out of. So yarn over and into that same stitch with our first back loop double, then into that same stitch with a second back loop double. Then from here, we're gonna be putting one back loop double crochet into the next six stitches. When we have our six back loop doubles, we're gonna do a double crochet three together. Then we're gonna be doing six back loop double crochets or until we reach our stitch marker. And since this is an increase row, an increase of five back loop doubles into our stitch marker stitch. Then from here, we're just gonna continue to repeat this section, making our way all the way around. And then I'll meet you back. All right, we are back. Our first one, two, three, four rows are complete. Now from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So I'm just gonna talk you guys through it once more. So just to talk you guys through how to do each of our rows for every odd number row, that's not gonna be an increase row. So we're just going to do our increase of three back loop double crochets. Then for our back loop doubles, we should have one more stitch than our previous row. So as an example, we just did six back loop double crochets in our previous row. For our following odd number row, we should have seven back loop double crochets, then our double crochet three together, and then seven back loop double crochets again with our increase. Then every even number row is going to be our increase row. So that's going to be an increase of five back loop double crochets with the same amount of double crochets as our previous row with a decrease through together in the middle and close it off with another increase of five. We're just gonna continue to repeat these two rows until we have a portion that can just lay over the tip of our shoulder. And I'll meet you guys back right after an even number row. Now I am back with my shoulders. I have a total of eight rows. My height is roughly six and a half inches or 16 centimeters. And that's from the top of our collar down to the point. Now we're gonna continue on with forming our piece. So all we're gonna do is basically just repeat every odd number row because we aren't gonna be doing any more increases or decreases until our panel stitch marker stitches and our panel stitch marker stitches are the ones that have either our secondary stitch marker or our second colored stitch marker, however you guys mark that off, can reach underneath our underarm and touch because that's going to form the width of our body and the underarm portion. So we should already know how to do the following row. I'm just gonna talk you guys through it and it's just gonna be a repeat. So our following row should be an odd number row for everyone. All we're gonna do is chain three, flip our work, start with one double crochet into the stitch that our chain three is in because that's the first half of this increase, then one back loop double crochet into every stitch 
Then we're going to do our double crochet three together. Then one back loop double crochet into every stitch until you reach our stitch marker. Once we do, increase the three back loop doubles while inserting your stitch marker into that second stitch. So just like I said, it is going to be a repeat of every odd number row that we've been doing so far. And we're just going to continue to do that until our panel stitch marker stitches, like I said, can touch underneath our underarm. Once we have that, I will meet you guys back right after an even number row, then we can get started on forming the body. All right, so I'm back. I've added a few more rows and we have now formed our underarm portion. And just to let y'all know, I have a total of 12 rows and the height from the tip of the collar all the way down to the point is roughly nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. Now from here, we're gonna section off the body and the armholes. So let's get this started. So from where we're at, all we're gonna do is take our hook and insert it into the stitch marker stitch that we have that separates the front panel and the shoulder. And this is mine right here. So all I'm gonna do is insert my hook in through that and then you guys can start to see this is the armhole and then from this to the other side is going to be the body. So once when it is in through that second stitch, we're going to pull through everything and then we're all going to chain three to get started on this row. Now what we're gonna do is more of our increase rows but we are gonna need to make sure of a few things. So first things first, we do need to make sure that we're working in the opposite direction from our previous row because we do wanna keep up with the ribbing that we have. And how we make sure we're working in the opposite direction is making sure that we're looking in through the body portion. We're gonna take a look at the tops of our stitches. Now our stitches are going to be in a teardrop shape. Now the edge of the teardrop that is curved, that's the direction that I was previously working in. So the point is the direction that I want to be working in, so I will be working in this direction. And we're going to start by inserting our hook into the same stitch that our chain three is in with two double crochets since this is an increase row, like I said. So yarn over into that same stitch with two double crochets and it is gonna count as this increases first half. Then from here, we're all gonna be putting one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we're ready to do our decrease. So I've just put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. Now we're going to do our double crochet three together. So that's going to be the same way that we've been doing it. Then one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker. All right, so we've made our way up with our back loop double crochets. I have already worked into the stitch marker with my increase of five double crochets. So our sections are basically gonna be the same as our increase sections that we've done so far. We're just gonna continue on with each of our sections until we reach our stitch marker that separates the front panels and the shoulders or the armholes, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can form the armhole on this side. I am back. I made my way all the way down to my following stitch marker stitch and I'm ready to separate the body and the armhole. So what we're all going to do is start with a double crochet working in through this stitch marker and the other stitch marker that we have to form everything together. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that following stitch marker stitch and then into that other panel stitch marker stitch and then we're going to pull through two and then double crochet per usual and now we're going to flip our work over to work on the other side of our piece so now that our work is flipped we do still need to do our increase so that's going to count as one of our stitches for our increase and we're just going to do the following four stitches that we need to do into that same stitch that this combining double crochet is worked into so there's one like i said in that same stitch there's two, same stitch, there is three, same stitch, there's four, and then same stitch, there's five, and don't forget to insert your stitch marker into that middle stitch again, just so we don't forget where that goes. Then from here, we're gonna continue on with our same sections to reach the end of the row. All right, so we made our way all the way around with our increase row. I have slip stitched into that third chain, but we do wanna make sure that we're still doing two extra double crochets into that same stitch that our chain three is in just to complete this increase over here. Now all we're gonna do from here is just work on the length. Now this portion is going to be completely up to you. If you would like to do more increased rows, you are more than welcome. Or if you like this width for your body, then you can just go straight in with your non-increase rows. Since we just did our increase row together, I'm going to do the first section for a non-increase row just as a refresher because that's what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the length of my piece. And then I'll let you do the rest on your own. So from where we're at, we're all going to chain three and flip. So again, for our non-increase rows, after we've flipped our work, we're gonna start with one double crochet into the same stitch that our chain three is in. 
then one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we're ready to do our double crochet through together. One back loop double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker, then an increase of three. Now, like I said, we're just gonna continue on with our increase rows or non-increase rows, whatever you guys need to do until we get the total length of the body portion that we want. So you can make this cropped or full length or a dress if you guys want to as well, that's completely up to you. Either way, I'll meet you guys back once when the body length is complete and then we get started on our sleeve. Now, I actually know how many rows I wanna have. So I will have 20 rows that's going to be cropped for me. But I'll meet you guys back once we have the total length of this piece finished for you. We are back. We're now ready to get started on our sleeve. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. And then what we're going to do is insert our hook into the stitch that we have that both the front and the back panel are coming out of. So those stitches will be occupied. So there's one and then into the back panel. There's my next. Then we're all going to insert our yarn onto our hook. We're going to pull our yarn through and start with a chain three. Then we're going to get started on our following row, which is going to be a decrease row, but we're all going to need to make sure that we're working in the opposite direction from our previous row to keep up with the ribbing. So just take a look at the tops of our previous row stitches. Like I said, in one of our previous clips, it is going to be in a teardrop shape. The teardrop will have a curve on one side. That is the direction that we were working into for the previous row. The pointed end of the teardrop is going to be the direction that we are going to work in for the next row, so I'll be working in this direction. And since this is a decrease row, basically all that's going to be is still do our increase of three at the points, but then when we reach the double crochet three together, we're now going to be doing a double crochet five together. So what we're going to do is yarn over. So just to get this first row started, yarn over. Into that same stitch that our chain three is in, we're going to start with one double crochet, that's one half of this increase. Then we're gonna be putting one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we are two stitches right before our double crochet three together. I've made my way down with my back loop doubles. Now we're going to do our double crochet five together. So we should have one, two stitches right before that stitch where our double crochet three together from our previous row is. So all we're gonna do is yarn over into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through two. Into that next stitch, pull through, pull through two, Yarn over into that next stitch, which should be the top of that double crochet through together. Pull through, pull through two. Another one, pull through, pull through two for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. And then once more, pull through two for one, two, three, four, five, six loops on our hook. Then yarn over and pull through all six to complete our double crochet five together. Now from here, put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. Into our stitch marker, we're all gonna do an increase of three double crochets. Then repeat this, making our way all the way around, and I'll meet you back. We are back. We've made our way all the way around with our first decrease row. Now from here, this portion is going to be completely up to you as well. If you guys need to do more decrease rows, feel free to just continue to repeat this row, but all we're basically doing is just doing our decrease rows until our sleeve becomes comfortable on our arm. Now we don't want it too snug. We basically just don't want it to be too loose before we hit the bell. Otherwise you can get a buckle right where your elbow is. But all I'm going to do is do a decrease row and then a regular row and then just continue to alternate between those two rows until mine becomes as snug as I need it to be. I'll meet you guys back once we have this decrease portion all finished up. But for those of you that don't need to do any more decreases, y'all are fine as well. Just continue on with your non-decrease rows until you reach your elbow. But for those of us that do need to do decrease rows, I will meet you back once when I have my decrease section complete. I am back. The decrease portion of my sleeve is complete. I have a total of three rows and it's just about an inch and a half or four centimeters. And all I'm gonna do from here is just do my regular row. So no increases, no decreases until this reaches my elbow. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the bell. Alrighty, so we are back. I've just finished up the length of my sleeve until we reached our elbow. Now I have a total of 12 rows. This length is roughly seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And now we're gonna work on our bell. Now that's going to be fairly simple. All that's going to be is just an increase into every row the same exact way that we've been doing our increases. So I'm just gonna do the first section with you guys and let you guys finish up on your own. Now as a refresher to do our increases, we're gonna start the row off by putting two back loop double crochets into the same stitch that our chain three is coming out of because that's gonna count as the first half of this increase. Then from here, we're gonna be putting one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we are one stitch right before we need to do our double crochet three together. 
So I made my way down with my back loop doubles, did my double crochet three together, then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we reach our next stitch marker. So I've made my way back up to my stitch marker stitch, then into the stitch marker stitch. We're all gonna be doing an increase of five back loop double crochets. Don't forget to insert your stitch marker into that middle stitch, then continue on with this section, making our way all the way around. And don't forget to close off the row with two extra double crochets into the same stitch that our chain three is in to complete the beginning increase that we have. Then from here, all we're gonna do is just continue to do our increase of five at every stitch marker stitch until we get the total length of the sleeve that we want. And then once we have that, I will meet you guys back. All right, so we are back. The entirety of my sleeve is complete. I did a total of 27 rows. My length is roughly 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters, and that's all the way down to the point of our sleeve. And now from here, we're going to repeat everything we did here on the other side. Then once we have that side finished, we can finish up our piece with our hood. All right, so getting started on our hood, we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch markers into any side rows within the collar where we'd like for our hood to start. So I would actually like for my hood to kind of align with the chevron pattern that I have. So I just kind of followed this line right here, traced it all the way up and inserted my stitch marker. And I did the same thing on this side, but inserting your stitch marker can be completely up to you. If you would like for it to touch in the middle, you guys are more than welcome to do that as well. Or if you would like it somewhere in between there, that's fine as well, completely up to you. Then from here, we're all just going to do a single crochet row. So we're gonna start by inserting our hook into our stitch marker side row. Then make your way around, working towards the back, putting one single crochet into every side row until we reach this stitch marker over here. And then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so we are back. Our single crochet row is complete. Now we're going to do a double crochet row with some increases. So we're all going to chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch for the next nine stitches. So we should all have our nine double crochets that is not including this chain three. And into the 10th, all we're gonna do is do an increase of two. So just two double crochets into that following stitch. So there is one double crochet. There is another double crochet. And that's it. Continue on with this increase. So nine double crochets, an increase into the next, and then continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our first double crochet row and now all we're gonna do is just back loop double crochet rows with no more increases or decreases until it reaches the top of our head and we're ready to seam it. So this is gonna be super duper simple. So all we're gonna do is chain three, flip our work and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain three, flip our work and then repeat. I'll meet you guys back once we have the height of our hood completed and then we can seam it all together. All right, so we are back. I have just finished up the total height of my hood. I have a total of 23 rows. And counting from my first single crochet row, I have a total of 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Now we're gonna seam it up to finish up our piece. So first things first, we're gonna grab the corner stitches, pinch them together. And just so that we don't need to flip the entirety of our piece inside out, we're going to grab the middle portion that we have, pull it through, and then just readjust our corner pieces so that nothing is twisted. And then from here, we're going to do a single crochet seam. So start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then just to do our seam, we're all gonna start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. Again, first stitch into the front, first stitch into the back, single and continue this so we don't have any more stitches left to work into. We are back, our hood is all seamed up and we are all done. The last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.